Today we are going to add a rectifier to our linear power supply. In our last video we examined what the transformer does for us. That takes the 117 volts off of the power grid and steps that down to a more reasonable 12 volts for our power supply. I have taped over my primary connections here because I don't need to measure them anymore and there's no need to have the live 117 volts out in the open where I could accidentally touch it. But the 12 volts uh, not really dangerous here. I can touch that all I want. If I touch them together, I'll get a little spark, but there's not enough voltage there to really cause us a problem. So let's go back to where we were at the end of the last video and hook up our oscilloscope to the secondary of our transformer. And there is our sine wave. It is uh, 12 volts RMS going to positive 16 volts back to down to about negative 16 volts back up to positive 16 volts repeating that over and over 60 times a second but if we look at this with our meter which i now have set for a maximum of 20 volts dc and what do we have on the meter well it's set to read dc volts and because i have pure alternating current i see nothing so what i need to do is convert this to dc and I'm going to do that with a single rectifier diode. I'm going to make a half wave rectifier. This is a 1N4005 diode, which has a 1 amp uh, current rating and a peak inverse voltage of about 600 volts. And I'm going to hook it into the circuit, as you see here, just a single diode coming off of the transformer. And I'll go directly into the oscilloscope and see what we get. I will get my positive voltage at the cathode of the diode, which is indicated by this white line right here. So let's take the oscilloscope's red lead and put it on the cathode. And I will use a clip lead to hook up the transformer to the anode. And now we look at the oscilloscope and you see we have removed the negative side of the sine wave. Let's step back a moment and take a look at how the half wave rectifier works. During the first half of the cycle, the current travels through the primary of the transformer in this direction. And in this transformer, it then travels in the secondary in this direction. That makes the current travel through the diode in this direction. This forward biases the diode and it conducts current, and therefore the current goes through the resistor in this direction. So the voltage across the resistor follows the voltage in the primary. During the second half of the cycle, the current travels through the primary of the transformer in this direction. So it attempts to travel through the secondary in this direction, which causes it to attempt to travel through the diode in this direction. Since this reverse biases the diode, no current flows in the secondary circuit, and so we have no current flow through the load. And with no current flow through the load, we cannot have a voltage across it, because to get a voltage we must have both resistance and current. So the voltage across the load during the second part of the cycle is going to be zero volts. So as the voltage reverses polarity in the primary, we only get one polarity in the secondary. And here we see this cycle repeating over and over. So now we have DC, but it's a pulsating DC. That's okay for light bulbs or maybe motors, but not good for a lot of other electronics. Let's also take a look at this with the meter. I'm going to touch the Red lead to the oscilloscope red, the black lead to the oscilloscope black, and we have 5.27 volts. That's 5.27 volts RMS, right? No, this is not a sine wave, so this meter can't give us the real RMS value. It's not a true RMS meter. Not really a very meaningful voltage, although it gives us an idea of how much energy might be in this uh, half-wave rectified wave here. So this is okay for a light bulb or a motor, but most electronics is not going to work well with this pulsating DC. So what can we do about that? Well, what we can do is put a filter capacitor across that as I show in the schematic here. What this will do is the capacitor is going to charge to my peak voltage and then with no nothing to discharge it, it can't discharge back through the diode. So it's going to just sit there at the peak voltage. So what I have is an 8,000 microfarad capacitor here, and I'm just going to hook that up in parallel with a couple of clip leads. This is an electrolytic capacitor, so it's polarized. Notice the plus marks over here, so I want to put the positive side here. So I'll put the red clip lead there for positive, and let it go ahead and roll if it wants to. Hook that up to the positive side, the 
cathode of the diode. And I will take the black lead and hook it up over to the negative side. Now watch what the oscilloscope does when I hook this up. And we see that goes right up to about 16 volts. It goes right up to the peak voltage. Let's take a closer look at that. So you can see that's there's our 15 volts here, 0, 5, 10, 15. And there's just about 16 volts up there. So that charged up to the peak voltage and it's just sitting there. So now we have 16 volts DC. So let's zoom out. Now let's take a look at that with the voltmeter and set that right up there. And there we have 16 point, about 16.5 volts, which pretty much agrees with what we have here, about 16, 16.5 volts. Now let's put a little bit of a load on there. I have a 100 ohm rheostat here, and I'm going to hook that in. Just put that in parallel with the capacitor and see what that does for us. I have the white clip lead there. I'm just going to touch the other side to here. Watch what the oscilloscope does. Here we go, 100 ohm load. And well, if you look carefully, you can see the voltage is coming down a little bit but it's still remaining pretty flat. So our load is bringing our voltage down. That's to be expected. We have an output impedance of our power supply. And when we take our current through that output impedance, we expect to lose some voltage. Now, let's give this thing a little more of a taxing. I'm going to hook this lead to the middle connector here. And let's make that about a 50 ohm load. Now let's see what happens on the oscilloscope. It goes down even further. Let's make it an even bigger load. Let's make it about a 25 ohm load. Uh, now it's not only going down, but look what's happening. It's getting ripply. Let's make that about a 12 ohm load. Don't want to get this too hot. Be careful not to burn anything up there. Ah, oh, yeah, I got lots of ripple there. It's not nice flat DC anymore. So that's what happens when we load that down. So this will work fine if we have a pretty small load and we're not too sensitive to the, uh, to the regulation. Uh, if this is a sound circuit or a video circuit, you have to have better regulation, but we have a finished power supply if all you need is a unregulated output. But let's take a look at that ripple again. If we want to flatten that out a little bit, what can we do? Well, we can go to a full wave rectifier. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got everything set back up with just the AC here. And I have on this breadboard a full wave bridge rectifier. It looks like this in the schematic. There are different ways to draw this. I prefer to draw the diamond on point version, but you might see it drawn different ways. The important thing is that your AC goes to the points where a cathode connects to an anode at the top and bottom of the diamond. And then you get your current flowing out of the side where we have two cathodes come together. And that will, since that's where the conventional current comes from, that's where we will have our positive voltage. Our negative voltage comes from the other end where the two anodes come together. So what I'm going to do now is hook this up the same way you just saw in the schematic. I'm going to hook the secondary of the transformer to the two points on the rectifier where we have an anode and a cathode coming together. So I now have my rectifier hooked up. Now I want to put my black lead where the two anodes come together. That'll be the negative side. And my red lead where the two cathodes come together. That will be my positive side. And now look at the oscilloscope. We have recovered that negative side. Instead of chopping it off, we flipped it over. Let's step back again and take a look at how the full wave rectifier works. You may see a full wave bridge rectifier drawn differently. I prefer the diamond on point style shown here. The resistor to the right represents the circuit load, which is whatever the power supply is supplying power to. In the first half of each AC cycle, the current flows in this direction through the transformer secondary. It then flows from the anode to the cathode of this diode, through the load, from the anode to the cathode of this diode, and back through the transformer. Current does not flow through this diode because current will not flow through a diode in this direction. It doesn't flow through this diode for the same reason.
Current flows through the load resistor in this direction. We always have our higher voltage where conventional current enters an impedance, such as a resistor, so the positive voltage will be here. We always have our lower voltage where the current exits an impedance, so the negative voltage will be here. When it comes to a voltage source, such as a transformer rectifier combination, we have our positive voltage where the conventional current exits the source. So the voltage will be positive where the current exits the rectifier here. The voltage will be positive anywhere along this line. It will likewise be negative anywhere along this line. Looking at the current flow, you may wonder why this diode is not conducting in this direction. Conventional current flows from a higher voltage to a lower voltage. Assuming this is a 12 volt transformer, at its peak the voltage is about plus 16 volts here compared to the opposite wire of the transformer secondary. This puts the voltage here at about plus 0.7 volts. To flow through this diode, the current would have to be flowing from a lower voltage to a higher voltage. The two grayed out diodes are reverse biased and therefore not conducting, where the two black diodes are forward biased and are conducting. In the second half of each AC cycle, the current flows in this direction through the transformer secondary. Now the current flows through this diode, through the load, then through this diode and back to the transformer. The current has reversed through the transformer, but is still flowing top to bottom through the load. The current flow and the voltage polarity at the load are the same as with the first half of the cycle. So here we have the current repeatedly changing direction in the transformer secondary, but the current through the load and the voltage polarity across it stay the same. And so now we have twice as much energy in our wave. Let's take a look at the uh, frequency of this. If we measure, once again, we have two milliseconds per division. We'll start measuring right here and measure one complete cycle. That's going to be two, four, six, eight, a little more than eight. It's actually 8.333 milliseconds. And so now our frequency is 120 hertz, our frequency of pulses. So with a half wave rectifier, our pulse frequency or ripple frequency was 60 hertz. So we have 60 hertz coming in, you still have a 60 hertz ripple frequency coming out of the rectifier. But when we full wave rectify it, notice that we have a ripple frequency or pulse frequency of 120 hertz. So we double that frequency. We also double the amount of energy that's in the, in the wave. So now we still have these pulses, okay for motors and light bulbs, but not okay for a lot of electronics. So we're going to go ahead and put that filter back in. Let's go ahead and put the filter capacitor across there. Grab a couple of clip leads here. Once again, this is rolled over, so we remember the indentation is the positive side, so I'll put the black lead at the negative side, the red lead at the positive side, and once again I'll put these uh, in parallel. Here's the schematic where the capacitor goes in, so the positive side where the two cathodes come together and the negative side where the two anodes come together. Watch the uh, oscilloscope. And there we go. And once again, we have about 16 volts of DC. If I look at this with the meter, 15.9, looks like a slightly lower voltage, but there we have our steady 16 volts. Now let's see what happens when we load this down. Hook up my lead here to go to the negative side of the capacitor. Once again, as you see here in the schematic, the load goes in parallel with the capacitor. And get ready to load this down. I have about 12 ohm load. Here we go, and that's what, what happens on the oscilloscope. And as you can see, I can't leave this there very long, but it's not going down as far, even with that high load, and it's not going up as far either, but uh, we have our ripple is less. We have less ripple, and our voltage doesn't go down as far because we have more energy with the full wave rectification. Let's take a look at that again. It's, hope this isn't getting too hot. I'm not getting too hot yet. Leave it there for a few more seconds. And, but once again, if you look, our ripple is not going down as far in voltage, so we have less ripple and a higher average voltage if we use the full wave rectifier. So 
we have a complete power supply here if we don't need uh, a lot of regulation. If it's a circuit that doesn't mind some ripple, and uh, if it uh, doesn't mind a little bit of voltage variation, we have a finished power supply of just a transformer, a full wave bridge rectifier, and a filter capacitor. As a matter of fact, I am repairing a battery charger that uh, failed on me uh, the other day. And here it is. Uh, there was a fusible link in here, and that uh, it was charging a bad battery that caused the fusible link to go, and it just, well, didn't destroy the charger, but it caused it to quit working. I am made a temporary fix to prove that was the problem by just shorting this out. Yes, it still works. I need, just need to put a new fusible link in there, but let's take a look at this whole battery charger circuit. This was, of course, once in a wall ward. I have took it out for repair. We have the transformer. Full wave bridge rectifier. How do I know? Well, I don't have to look at how they're hooked up. I see four diodes. I know it's a full wave bridge rectifier. One 1,000 microfarad. It's a little hard to see, but it says 1,000 microfarad filter capacitor. And that's all there was to this. Transformer, full wave bridge rectifier, and a filter capacitor. And that was all it was needed for this battery charger. So if that's all you need, we have a finished power supply. This would be a, a filtered, unregulated DC power supply. So in our next video, what we're going to do is put some regulation in here, but that's uh, for the next video. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.